I thought it was uh, unthinking at best, nasty at worst. And I, I'm still shocked to see that kind of prejudice uh, so openly displayed, sniggering uh, at people, ridiculing people for who they are. Now, trans people have to face this, and much worse, every day. And that's what we're working to stop. Now, the bill. What's the bill going to do about it? Well, it aims to tackle discrimination overall in all its forms. It's going to strengthen the way in which we can do that. And it'll streamline the law. It's going to bring nine major pieces of legislation into one. It's going to put the law all in one place so that employers, organisations, individuals, public authorities can't argue they don't know what the law is. It's all there in one place. It uh, has the potential to make a really profound advance and to be a really big change in uh, the way in which society, our society, deals with these issues. The most significant part, I think, for LGBT people will be the extension of the public sector duty to promote equality. Um, in addition to the extension of protection to those who as associate with the protected groups, which will include LGBT people, and also those who are perceived as being LGBT people, whether or not they are. That has a potential to make a huge difference. The whole purpose of the public sector duty is about designing discrimination out of our society, starting with the public sector. Rather than expecting individuals who've been discriminated against to climb what can be a mountain of court cases in order to have society accept there was a problem and put it right and redress it in some way. How much better it would be if we could make sure it never happens in the first place by designing discrimination out. That is what the public sector duty is about. It's not some kind of political correctness. It's a way of building into our the way we do things in public, in, in, in our society, building into it esteem for all, building out of it discrimination and getting rid of prejudice in that way. So for example, schools, including faith schools, will have to look at how to prevent homophobic and transphobic bullying before it happens, instead of just closing their eyes and saying it doesn't happen, or it's some other kind of bullying, or it's not a matter for them. Schools, of course, are where we learn to challenge prejudice, confront injustice, and stand up for what's right. And if we can't get it right in our schools, then we're not giving ourselves a good chance of improving our society as much as we should. So that duty is essential. It's going to complement existing work already going on in the three strands that have already got the public sector duty. Putting the duty on the statute book won't do the job. It's the beginning of doing the job. Because you then have to make sure that public authorities know what that job is, understand what their obligation is, and go out and do it. Now, they don't even in the three strands that have it at the moment, yet fully know that. I know a little about the disability side, and there is improvement in the three, two and a half years since that duty came in. Some do it better than others. It's increased awareness, in, immeasurably in my view, in the public sector from when I first became a minister uh, some eight years ago. Uh, there's an immeasurable increase in the amount of understanding that there is of disability, uh, disability, disabled people's needs to have access. That doesn't mean it always works. You still get some egregious examples of complete cock-ups that are just embarrassing. But, less than they used to be, good practice all over the place, an increasing understanding amongst, amongst the public sector and a desire to do it right not always knowing quite how, sometimes getting it wrong, but nonetheless in advance. And this is what the public sector duty can do. We've got a similar problem with the gender duty at present, because the gender duty has been taken by some public organisations, local authorities and others, to say, that means you've got to treat men and women the same, therefore we can't fund any women's organisations. Well, no, wrong. Yes. But we can go and explain to them why it's wrong and explain to them what is right. So it's a big educative tool as well as a tool of engineering for change. That is what's in front of us. We can get this on the statute book for LGBT people as well as all the other strands. And I, along with Vera, intend to make sure that we do. It's a carryover bill. Um, it has to be finished within one year of it being introduced, which means 
that by next March, the sorry, I can't give you the exact date, uh, by next March sometime, it will have to be law. Um, Vera and I will make sure we get it through the House of Commons. We'll have some big arguments, particularly with some on the religious extreme of, of view in respect of LGBT people's rights. But we will stand firm. We thoroughly intend to stand firm. Um, it will be helpful if you stand firm with us, if you feed in uh, your experience, if you influence through your own faith communities the agenda within those communities to make it clear that, as Giles says, prejudice and discrimination are never acceptable. Equality and human rights are what we need, dignity for everybody. This bill will help us to do that. You've got to help us get it through. Thank you very much.